this homemade cutter just disintegrated and it uh, went all over the workshop. Uh, I only successfully found this piece. Well, welcome back to Workshop Friend. Today I'd like to share with you one of my failures and what I think I've learned from it. I'm in between projects at the moment really and I've been working on um, my rear tool post holder on my Myford lathe which I'll show you. So this tool post is actually extremely useful and if you haven't got one on a smaller lathe like this I do recommend that you get one um, or make one. And uh, this not only gives you you know another tool post location or another station if you like uh, to save tool changes but uh, for parting off it's absolutely invaluable it makes a huge difference. I'd previously made this tool post for another lathe and I needed to increase the height so I put this block on the bottom this razor block and for a long time it had always been separate but it was a bit untidy and it really wasn't good for rigidity so I decided to attach it permanently to the bottom using these three socket head cap screws and I actually made the countersink which I featured in one of my shorts videos for this task to make these countersink holes and if you look closely there you can see this one is a bit messed up and it was in the process of machining this hole that my counter bore gave way. So I previously machined holes in aluminium plate and uh, that was entirely satisfactory and I was quite successful to start with in steel as well but um, at one point the tool just shattered and uh, this was a reminder to me how important it is to wear eye protection um, I have my glasses on but perhaps I really should have goggles on as well. You can see the damage it caused to the unhardened spindle there and it, it caught in the chuck. The reason it was so violent is because my Meddings drill has a gear drive and uh, it really did uh, apply quite a lot of torque to this as it uh, locked up. Well I have another previously made counter bore uh, here which is of a slightly different design. I actually just filed this and I didn't um, use the miller machine and you can see that the the lands are actually much smaller the, the cutting edges are much much smaller and of course the problem with that is that uh, you quickly accumulate swarf and there's nowhere for it to go so it's a very slow cutting process so when I made this one I tried to make it um, with much more space uh, to for the swarf to accumulate before it's brushed away and I think that might be part of the problem so what I want to do is try again this is such a useful tool um, and I can make it in different sizes that I think I'm, it's worth persevering the original proportions are here the diameter and the bore will be the same because I, I want it for the same size bolt um, what I'm going to do is reduce the height of these teeth so before they were 5 30 seconds or 4 millimeters I'm going to reduce it to 3 millimeters so hopefully that will increase the strength I'm going to also reduce the length of this portion from uh, just over 10 millimeters to 8 millimeters so I'm going to change the proportions I'm going to stick with the same milling cutter which was a 3 8 diameter cutter that seems about right but the other thing I want to do is to experiment with uh, changing the tempering. So when I tempered this, I tempered it to what I thought was a light straw. I'm not sure if that color shows up on video, but there is some variation there. I want to see if I can improve that tempering and maybe just temper it a little bit, temper it back a little bit more and take off some of the hardness and brittleness. The last change I want to make is to pre-drill the holes uh, with a slightly smaller drill and then um, just leave the counter bore to finish off basically opening up the hole to final size and flattening out the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, go through the machining process. I don't think you need to see this. If you want to see it you can refer to my shorts video. Uh, the link for it is up here and having seen that, just one minute of course, you can come back and I'll show you the new cutter ready for hardening and tempering. Okay, I've removed the work from the dividing head on the milling machine. Um, I've, I've uh, just uh, cleaned up these edges here 
to remove any burrs and I put it back in the lathe and uh, carefully ran the quarter inch reamer through the hole again to remove the burrs on the inside. So with this geometry now um, it's really quite easy to provide the relief on the on the teeth um, something like five degrees by um, just filing with a needle file uh, right up to the the uh, corner of the of the cutting edge there and uh, uh, you know with with good light you can see exactly what you're doing and you end up with with uh, three teeth uh, exactly the right height so they all cut evenly so the next thing to do is to go over to the vise and just provide that uh, that relief on the cutting edges after about 10 minutes of uh, filing this is where i've got to um, I've also uh, very carefully used this uh, little homemade scraper which I prefer for small jobs like this made from an old file and uh, I can get into those corners there and uh, remove any small burrs that are left. I haven't touched the actual cutting edge that's just left as it was. Uh, I've done that on the on the outside here and also on the inside edge in there. But if we look down from above hopefully you'll be able to see the the relief I think you can see that what I'm going to do now is um, cut this off uh, put it back in the lathe face machining is now complete so that's been faced chamfered um, everything is deburred and then I've made up the spindle so uh, I put uh, a little flat on here so that the set screw um, falls on there and uh, any indentations it makes will not prevent me from removing it and with that foul up with the old one I can be sure that that's going to be very difficult to get off there because that set screw will have dug into the shaft so that's a good reason for doing that not that I expect to foul up this time, but anyway, that's better practice that way. So that's ready now for disassembly, cleaning, and then I will harden this and temper it. I'm using my propane torch. The fire bricks make heating much easier. I'm bringing this up to a bright red heat and I'll let it soak at temperature for a while to make sure it's uniformly heated. And now to quench it, I just plunge it into cold water and agitate it and I found with that such a small component there's no measurable distortion. Well this is how it looks after hardening out and uh, you can see it's got a lot of uh, scale on there it's not very thick it's uh, it's actually very easy to remove so I'll put a little bit of fine steel wool on there and finish off with some wet and dry to get a nice polished surface which we need for for uh, tempering So I laid the old cutter next to the one I'm working on as a color guide. I wasn't sure if this would work under artificial light, but um, it seemed to be okay. What I was aiming for was a slightly darker than light straw color. And you can see just how quickly the color changes. And then as soon as I reach the right color, I quench it. And that should be the right temper. So here's the finished counter bore. Mark II with the shorter teeth, uh, slightly more tempering. This is designed for quarter inch holes. I think at a push we could probably do six millimeter as well. So we'll put a quarter inch hole through the work and uh, then that matches with this pilot. So uh, that will fit nicely in the hole. And then for aluminium, uh, as I know already, I can use this counter bore to um, plunge straight in but for steel what I'm probably going to do is use this uh, slightly undersized drill uh, to bring it to depth 
and then um, allow the counterbore just to clean up the outside diameter by a few thou and then flatten out the bottom of the hole. So that's going to be, going to be my new approach. You can see why these are inherently fragile because you don't have the support of the center section whereas the commercially made ones of course are solid. But the advantage of this is that I can uh, remove this and I can I can touch up these top surfaces and hopefully restore the sharpness. So that's my plan. Um, I don't have any work at the moment in steel that's re that requires this, so that will have to wait until a job comes along. Um, but anyway, I hope this has been interesting and uh, there's been something here that uh, you might be able to use in your workshop.